Hello guys, this is Universal Giant. Welcome back for more of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. We have all of the heart pieces, golden bugs, and bomb upgrades we can have to this point. So the only thing we have to do now is head down into the lake bed temple at the very bottom of Lake Hylia. And like we said before, all we have to do is swim towards the purple dot on the map there. And it's fairly difficult to see because it's nighttime. But it should be better illuminated once we get a little bit further down here. And you can see there's a little cutout in the ocean floor. Not ocean floor. Oh, who cares? It's just like Lake Hylia in Ocarina of Time. And you have all of these rocks around. Even the Zora's swimming around. Can we talk to the Zora? I don't think we can. Oh, yes, we can. Never talked to her before. Bubbles rising from the depths of the ocean? Too dangerous to swim close people get carried away in those currents. Well, it was in red text. I suppose that's important. Let's see what the other one has to say. I never talked to these guys. I also don't know a very good way to stop myself from swimming. Heroes garb, people of legends. Yes, I am the incarnation of the very same person. And she actually recognizes maker of bombs. Sure, I have plenty of water bombs. And she'll give us what? No, okay, this is a total ripoff, unless you... How much was, uh, what's his name selling them for? Maybe this is the same price, but since we've already stocked up at Barnes's place, there's no need to buy them here. Very convenient that you have this here, otherwise you'd have to go all the way back to Kakariko Village to buy them from Barnes. But uh, most of those water jets, you're not really too concerned with. What you are... Is this area over here, and if you haven't guessed, this is the temple. First thing we gotta do, drop down here. You'll notice the little bubbles coming up down here. Drop yourself a water bomb, and that'll open up another one of those water jets. And as you've probably tested before, you drop a water bomb on one of these things, it'll raise up and open up the path into the lake bed temple. So in we go. Third dungeon of the game. Doesn't look much like a dungeon yet, since we are just swimming through this water-filled cavern here. I suppose this is just to make sure you get a feel for how the swimming mechanics work. You can also use your iron boots and walk straight through. Jellyfish, berries, not too interested. Shell blade on the bottom, not too interested can't do much with these guys yet, at least nothing I'm aware of, but once we surface, see there's an entire area for us to explore. The Lake Bed Temple. Gee, a door and a switch. What's that supposed to indicate? Now, what I didn't mention about the chews is that they can combine with each other to form bigger chews. Now, it's not too much of an issue right now. But if you're looking for, say, Chew Jelly, you don't want them to combine with each other before you can get a swipe of that jelly. Because if they do, then they'll turn into a purple chew. So if that red chew decided to combine with a purple chew, we'd be stuck with purple jelly. And I'm pretty sure there's also a blue chew in here somewhere. And I'd like to run into him if he's around here. Now, is this rupees or is this something else? More water bombs. You will find a lot of water bombs in this dungeon. Do I have... Yeah, that's going to be... Double, right. You'll find a lot of water bombs in this dungeon because they honestly want to make sure you are fully stocked on those things. And we're going to be using them quite frequently if you haven't guessed. Let me get them on my iron boots before I forget. I don't want to use that thing by accident. They'll give you plenty of water bombs because you're going to need a lot of them. And... You... To have to run back to Kakariko Village to buy more every single time you need one is just a pain in the neck. And arrows, because we're probably going to have to make bomb arrows. I do hear something, though. If that's a blue chew, I want it. I hear a chew. That's no, just another red chew. They give you plenty of jelly in here, more than I thought they did. Oh well, everybody saw the switch up here, so we just jump to it, grab it, pull it down, and that opens up the door. And yes, that is Zora's Sapphire on the door. When does that blue chew come down? I want myself a blue chew. 
So many red shoes, though. I guess this is a really good place to come back if you're looking for health. I want a blue chew. I heard something. I know it's here. I've destroyed everything but it. It's another red chew. I'm gonna keep wandering around here until the enemy music goes away. Chews. Most entertaining start to a dungeon ever. There he is. Okay, so let's get rid of the red shoe jelly and pick ourselves up some of that blue stuff. So now I've got two bottles of these blue potions. Except now that we actually have eight hearts, if we get a ninth heart, this will be more helpful than the red shoe jelly. So now we have two of those. I'm feeling very good about myself right now. And in here, you can see these stalactites. Pretty sure they're stalactites and not stalagmites. I honestly don't know what the do. One is when they're attached to the ground pointing up. The other is when they're attached to the ceiling pointing down. I'm waiting for Minda to say something. There we go. So we see one fall to the ground. Whoa, that's treacherous. Whoa, don't you think you ought to knock down those stalactites hanging off the ceiling first? They don't look to be very stable. I bet they break pretty easily if you hit them with enough force, don't you think? I'd say so too. So let's combine a bomb with our arrows. I don't want to use water bombs. You don't want to waste those more often than you have to. So we'll just select regular bombs and just shoot some of these things down. And thankfully you don't get a cutscene for every single one of these you shoot down. The more important ones... Are there any other ones around here? I'm pretty sure it's just those four. So let's get back to the stuff I was on before, because I will completely forget to switch back to them unless I do otherwise. And a new enemy down here! This is the Helmosaur! Only its exposed rear can be used to harm this thing. So you want to try to stun it either with your shield or have it run into something. You can also swipe your sword at it until it's retreating back into its helmet, I suppose. And its helmet comes off even when that thing dies, and this can be used as a weapon to kill other things. But there aren't any other enemies around here that I can use to display that. Not too important. Now the main reason we knock these things down was so we could get around this room. That'll allow us to climb a little bit further up. What's in you? Ah, health I didn't need until I actually went after it to get it. But one stalactite we knock down all the way on the opposite side of the room will give way to a chest, and I believe that also has water bombs. They really make sure you have plenty of water bombs when you head into this dungeon, because if you don't know what you're doing, you're probably going to waste a ton of them. Ten water bombs, if I remember correctly? Yep. I don't know why, this is just one of those chests in this game that I remember. Are there any chests that you guys just randomly remember for no reason if they have absolutely no significance whatsoever? I'm finding the further I go into this game, the more random chests I remember. Well, it looks like we've reached the central hub of the temple, and there's water flowing around the entire place. Isn't this foreboding of things to come? No? Lizalfos! I believe you may actually be called Lizalfos, but I've always called you Lizalfos because I want to make the connection with a lizard. Every time. So we open this door. And here we are, the central hub of the temple. Typical 3D water temple. Remember how straightforward the forest temple was, and how straightforward the Goron mines were? Yeah, I'm gonna get lost. I have not been through here in years. Although, I am I think the uh, complexity of this place is a little bit overhyped. I never... Only when I played through this place the first time did I get myself completely lost. Every other time... Not so bad. I think just once you get through this place for the first time, it's not that bad. Tektites! We've seen you before, haven't we? I thought we did. But before we head over there, I think there's somebody we want to meet on this side. Is she here? Nope. Well, no surprise who I'm looking for. We're not heading down there yet. We'll just go where the dungeon takes us. The first door that we have access to. 
The one on the first floor to the west. And there's nothing over here! Wonderful! I'm already lost! No, we'll be able to come through here later once that wheel is moving, but it's obviously not for now. So let's look for some other way to go. I think the other thing we should be looking for is a switch so we can use to move the staircase in the middle. I believe one jump attack will also kill those things. Treasure chest! 20 rupees? Now just arrows. See, I don't know where everything is. But this switch is going to move the staircase. And yes, you did see the boss door on that island over there. If we had the boss key, we could go there immediately. But we don't. And do not roll up the staircase, because you will always w slam your head. I hate that. Why can't you just roll up the steps? I know it's not realistic, but it's more fun and it saves time to just roll up the stairs. Yep. One jump attack does it. There she is. It's Uku again. And unlike last time, I promise I will show off what she does. Now, just like any other game, you can save in the middle of a dungeon. However, if you save in the middle of a dungeon, you will restart the game at the very beginning of the dungeon. So, instead of being in this room, we will be all the way back at the beginning. However, if we go through another door, the first door I have access to, probably the one on the west side of the first... second... this is the second floor, right? I'll keep referring to it as the first, just because we came in on the first floor, whatever. If we go through this door, get ourselves out here, let's pull out Uku, and she'll allow us to warp right out. But first, it's her son, and it's a demonic floating head with wings where its ears should be. Uku Jr. So all we have to do after she warps us out is talk to her son. And her son will just warp us right back where we used her. So if we for some reason wanted to quit the game right now, we could have used Uku to get out of the dungeon. She'll warp us back to Lake Hylia and say we quit and restarted the game right now. We'll pull out Uku Jr. here. And he'll warp us back to his mom. So rather than have to start all the way back at the very beginning of the temple, we're back at the room where we left off. Very helpful if you want to quit a dungeon if you're a fairly significant way through it, but for a dungeon like the Lake Bed Temple here, it's not too big, it doesn't take too long to get back to the central hub, and you, as you can imagine, most of the temple branches off from this location. So, it's it doesn't take too long to get back, but other dungeons, like the very next one, that can take quite a bit of time to get back to, you'll probably want to make use of Uku Jr. if you have to quit. Do I really have to say we're getting the dungeon map first? I mean, come on. So, just to confuse people even more, this is the lake bed temple. Yes, that's the boss floor. No kidding. But as you can see, it's fairly large, and there's a lot to it. And like the fire temple in Ocarina of Time, you have these two towers to the east and to the west. We'll explore those in a bit. In fact, we're probably heading towards one right now. And we'll just roll right past the helmet, so no reason to deal with him yet. Well, this is quite an interesting room. You can see there is a lot to it, but it doesn't seem like much is going on in here quite yet. Let's pull out some bomb arrows, because I see some stalactites up there. Let's shoot as many of these down as we can find. I see another one over there. I believe that's it. Move back to make sure I covered everything. Up, oh, yep, there's a third one. Or maybe I missed that one. Doesn't matter. Let's see... Can we jump down there from here? What can we do from over here? Up there is a treasure that we want. We cannot reach it yet. 
because this bridge is not floating. However, we can luckily climb above this thing. But yeah, once we raise the water level in here, the bridge will go up and that will give us access to the area over there that has the heart piece. What we want to do here is jump across this thing and if we can get on top of it, we can jump over to this chest which had better have a small key. Huzzah! We have a small key and we can get through that door I tried to go through stupidly earlier. So let's climb our way back up and around and make our way out of this room. But if you haven't guessed, we're going to be making our way through a lot of rooms for the second and third and fourth and fifth times. There's going to be a lot of backtracking in this dungeon. There's going to be a lot of confusion. So it's very helpful if you get somewhere for the first time, take note of the, a couple of things in here. You can see the bridge over there that will probably be floating. It is kind of floating on the water down there, but the water level's too low. You can see these platforms that aren't moving. You can see doors off to the side and in front of us, so you can imagine we're going to have to use those platforms to cross at some point. But there's not much else we can do in here for now. Just keep those things in mind for later, because if you forget about them, it will be a pain in the ass to remember. 